Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I am getting the chance to come to you again. And we always, I mean, I personally think it's such a privilege and a blessing that I can share some spiritual food with you every opportunity that I get. And you all that follows my wife and I on this channel, you will get, you will see that we enjoy natural food greatly, like everyone else do. But we also know the importance of spiritual food and how much we love spiritual food even the more. For we know that <clears throat> our creator said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, in yesterday's video that my wife and I did, you heard me constantly trying to clear my throat. Well, today, as you can see, my wife has made me some lemon ginger tea with honey. And um, hopefully this will help me keep my throat clear and that you can all hear me thoroughly and clearly without me constantly clearing my throat. And if you all need to, <clears throat> go get yourself a cup of this. This is some good stuff right here. What is it? Again, you say? This is called lemon ginger tea with honey. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, today, <clears throat> we're going to be talking to you about um, some word that's coming from Galatians. And I'm going to be reading from Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 1. And then I'm dropping down to verse 13. But I, when you all get your Bibles, you all can read all of that that's in between 1 and 13. That, that's this in between 1 and 13 is very interesting. I suggest you read it. Okay. <clears throat> but for right now... If you need a title for this, um, this spiritual food that I'm bringing to you today, let's call this title, All the Law Comes Down to This One Instruction. I'll say it again. All the law comes down to this one instruction. All right? Follow along with me. If you will, then listen. As you can see, I have, yes, 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 the King James, always, but I also have my iPad, and my iPad, as you can see, I have it split in two columns. Interesting enough, you all always know that I like to read from the King James, as well as a different translation, which is normal for us at Kingdom Truths Global Ministry. My wife and I study with different translations, so not only do we get the gist of what Scripture is saying, but so that you can get the gist of what the Word of God is saying. Some of us have read the King James Version. You'll go to church, hear your preacher preaching. They'll tell you to turn to King James. Today, we don't use thou, ye, though. We use language that you understand. And um, it, why read something that you're not even understanding your perception of like what are they talking about we we listen your soul is too important for you not to understand and your time on earth is too important for you not to understand the word is coming forth you know my wife was telling me just recently every step that you and I take is numbered and every word every idle word that we speak we have to give an account of so it's essential <clears throat> that we understand the complexity of the Lord who created us and what he wants us to do. The words he wants us to speak, the life in which he wants us to live. You know, I heard my grandfather sing a song that just that shook me to my core. And he was singing at 92 years old before he left to go home to be with the father. He stood up as feeble as he was.
but yet full of strength. He said, the life I live will speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing no one could say. The life I live will speak for me. My brothers and sisters, that's the same for all of us. You can live like a pure devil all your life. And people will get up and act just like you was an angel. But you know what? The grace of God still is right there available for you before you take your last breath. And that is essential in what we're talking about. Okay, so I'm going to be reading today from Galatians chapter 5, the King James Version. And I'm switching from the, the Passion Translation because Biblegate is no longer offering the Passion Translation. I just found that out today. <clears throat> I mean, I just used it just this week. But now it's not available. So I am going to go with the voice. Sometimes I use Messenger. Sometimes I use NIV. Sometimes we use different translations. But today we're going to use the voice. And so I'm going to read some of this. One of the things I wanted to read is verse 1. And then I'm just going to drop down to verse 13. Because I want you to see the gist of this. Now look what this says. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to read that same verse from the voice translation. So stand strong in our freedom. The anointed one freed us so we wouldn't spend one more day under the yoke of slavery, trapped under the law. This is the reason why I told you all, go ahead and read 1 through 13 so you can find out what is Paul talking about. Now, my, my whole purpose and my intent today is um, to go all the way down to 13. But I want you all, because it's important, read 1 through 13 and see the gist of that. Because we have still people today that's caught up in that. And Paul said a long time ago, if you're caught up in those verses, in this situation, this circumstances that's going on between 1 and 12, you are falling from grace. That's what Paul said. Read that. It's important. You don't want to be fouled or you don't want to be, you don't want to lose grace. All right, let's go down to um, 13. I'm going to let you all deal with that. It's self-explanatory and you can deal with it. Okay. <clears throat> and sip on some tea. The tea's great. Let's steer that honey up in there. All right, 13. <clears throat> For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to, to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, is what the King James said, King James. But let's, I'm going to read the translation of that and you'll see what I mean. 14 says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. It's actually more of an instruction, more so than a word. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Fifteen. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Sixteen. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and read 13 through 16 from the voice translation. Brothers and sisters, God has called you to freedom. Hear the call and do not spoil this gift by using your liberty to engage in what your flesh desires. Hmm. Instead, use it to serve each other as Yahshua taught through love. I replaced the word Jesus with Yeshua, as you all know. I always do. Or I might even use the word Emmanuel. I prefer Yahshua or Emmanuel over the word Jesus. Even though Jesus is translated, I understand that. I just prefer to call him by his real name, not his translated name. Okay, so let's keep reading. 14 says, for the whole law comes down to this one instruction. The whole law. And this is what Paul is talking about. The whole law. And we still have people today that still is living under the law instead of grace and truth. Look what he says here. For the whole law comes down to this one instruction. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know we love God first. That's period. Then the Lord says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do you seriously think the things that's happening in the world today would be seriously going on if we took this golden rule, this law, this kingdom law that the Lord told us to do, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You think some of this stuff will be going on? Indeed not. Because people choose not to love your neighbor as you love yourself. But those of us that's born again, this is an instruction from our Father, our Creator, that we must do. Look what he says. So, 15. Why all this vicious gnawing on each other? Why? Why? And um, this is the voice translation. Go ahead and turn it. Turn to it. Read it for yourself. All this vicious knowing on each other. If you are not careful, you will find you've eaten each other alive. <laughs> and they are. People is killing people because of just playing folly. They find pleasure in shedding blood, like the scripture said. Just ridiculous. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am, for time's sake, and we're already up into 13 minutes. I'm going to read back again to the King James Version. And I'm going to read again the voice translation. So you can get the jest. Let's start at verse 16. And I'm reading from the, and those of you that's just now joining me, <clears throat> I am in Galatians chapter 5. And if you will, come with me down to 16. And those of you that have your Bible, but you're not sure where Galatians is at. Galatians is in the New Testament. So go into the front of your Bible. Look for the New Testaments. You'll see New Testaments and Old Testaments. See what page Galatians is on. Turn your Bibles over to that page. Look for chapter 5. And then come with me down here so you can follow along to verse 16. Okay? I certainly do appreciate you. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17. 
For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Hmm. 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Listen closely. Now some people blame this on Satan, even though Satan manipulates people. But the scripture said these are the works of the flesh itself. Adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, humiliation, wrath, strife, sedition. Hmm. You see a lot of that going on in the world today. Every bit of what we just named. Heresy, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Some more tea, please. Let me read that. All the way to... I'm going to read those same verses. In the, um, the voice translation. Here's my instructions. Walk in the Spirit. And let the Spirit bring order to your life. If you do... You will never give in to your selfish and sinful cravings. 17. For everything the flesh desires goes against the spirit. And everything the spirit desires goes against the flesh. There is a constant battle raging between them that prevents you from doing the good you want to do. But when you are led by the Spirit, you are no longer subject to the law. And one of the things that you do, the first thing that you need to do is once you become born again, is you get your mind renewed, like it says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, by getting in his word and finding out you got to feed your spirit man. If you constantly feed your flesh and don't feed your spirit man the word and believe and walk in faith and believe, then your spirit man will starve and your fleshly man will be dominant. And then Satan will come into that flesh because that mind is Satan's playground. And if you let your earthly wisdom dominate, then you're going to live a defeated life. But if you walk in the spirit like the scripture is saying and you feed your spirit man the word and get your mind renewed, you can let your spirit man dominate the flesh and tell the flesh, knock it off. Your spirit man is the one that's going to leave here when you depart. Your spirit man is leaving. The flesh is going to stay. It's going to go back to the dirt and dust where it came from. So why would you let your flesh send your spirit to hell? Don't do it. Just don't. Okay. You, does that sound kind of tough? I, I, I want it to be tough. All right. 22. Let's go back to King, King James Version and read uh, 22. And... Um, and see what we have here. How many minutes we got? Well, we're 20 minutes into this video. And I'm just delighted that you're here to hear this word. Okay. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. 
And I've shared this. We've shared this before, but we're going to share it and keep sharing it as long as we're breathing. But the fruit of the Spirit, listen to this, the Spirit of God have fruits and the Spirit of God has gifts. But we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Look at this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. There is no law against these things that the Lord just said. None. Look what 24 says. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit and let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. I'm going to read those same verses over here in the voice translation, starting at 22. All right, I may have to bag this up and start at 19. All right, so the voice translation says this. It is clear that our flesh entices us into practicing some of its most hideous acts, participating in corrupt sexual relationships, impurity, unbridled lust, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, arguing, jealousy, anger, selfishness, contentiousness, divisions, envying one of another, good fortune, drunkenness. Look at this word right here. 21 said envying of one's good fortune. Being envious of one's good fortune. Drunkenness. Drunken rivalry. And other shameful vices that plagues mankind. I told you this clearly before and I only tell you again so there is no room for confusion. And those who give in to these ways will not inherit the kingdom of God. Here's a footnote down here. Well, actually, it's just um, a paragraph um, which has been interjected in here. And I'm going to read it. Paul has been preaching about the call of God to freedom. And so he now spells it out. We are done with the demand of the law. There's been so many people that talks about living under the law. And Paul, back then, was saying, stop it. He said, stop that. It's no longer living under the law. This is grace and truth and mercy and walking in the spirit. Because Christ himself gave up the ghost that all of us could be free and not under bondage or slavery to the law. This is what Paul is saying. <clears throat> and you can read it for yourself. Let's keep reading. And so he now spells it out. We are done with the demands of the law. Now we are free to live in the spirit and to be truly right with God. As free people, the spirit gives us the characteristics of Jesus. We, too, can freely love in joy and peace. And we can have patience along with kindness and faithfulness that can only come from the Father. Isn't that beautiful? My brothers and sisters, do you have the fruit that came directly from the Father? My God, isn't that just wonderful? Look at this right here. We can reflect the goodness of God 
while being gentle in operating with self-control. For those who follow him, Yahshua and Yahweh, and live in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself, these characteristics or fruits are a gift from God. Isn't that awesome? As we grow in the faith, we find that we belong to God, Yahweh, and can walk daily in the Spirit. That's our intention. That's our goal. As long as we're still breathing and walking earth, our number one goal is to fulfill the assignment that was given to us before we leave. So we can hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Whether you all believe that or not, I believe it. And this is my life, my soul, my spirit. And I'm sealed with a seal by the Holy Spirit. And when I leave here, I'm going right straight to heaven. No ifs, ands, or buts, because I've been following the instructions. This is the instruction manual, and I've been following it. My wife's been following it. We've taught this to our children. We're teaching it to you. And it's your choice to believe or not. That's your choice. That's your spirit, your soul. But I hope, because of love and grace and peace, that you will listen to this word and follow it. Okay. 22. The Holy Spirit produces a different kind of fruit. Hmm. Don't you wonder what kind of fruit that is? Well, here it is. Unconditional love. Man. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kind-heartedness. Goodness faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, you won't find any law opposing to fruit like this. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. But guess what? The Sadducees, the Pharisees, even Christ himself was standing right in front of them showing all these fruits, and they hated them. But Nicodemus, he came to him at night and said, you know what? No, nah, there's something different about you. No, nah, no. Nah. The works that you do, only God, you know God personally to be able to be doing these things. And this is the reason why we study the word, because we're flesh and blood people. We're vessels like this picture you see my wife put on the wall behind me. We're vessels, molded and shaped that we can carry the anointing, the oil, the Holy Spirit, that dudamous power that God gave us in these vessels to share it to you, this boldness. And I love sharing this word with you. Seriously love it. Twenty-four. Those of us who belong to the anointed one. That's me. Are you? Do you belong to the anointed one? I do. Let me read that again. Those of us who belong to the anointed one have crucified the old lives and put to death the flesh and all the lust and desires that plagues us. Now, since we have chosen to walk with the Spirit, Let's keep each step in perfect sync with God's spirit. 26, this will happen when we set aside our self-interest and work together to create true community instead of a culture consumed by provocation, pride, and envy. Isn't that interesting? You know, I'm not even going to say a word about that. I start to share something, but I just won't share it. 
Well, you know what? I thank you guys for listening to me. It's 30 minutes into this. And thank you for sharing that 30 minutes with me. Let's just pray that um, some of our brothers and sisters and our daughters, our spiritual sons and daughters, my wife's been listening. You know who you are. We've been lifting you guys up in prayer. Um, if you hear this video and you know your phone is turned off, you need to be calling us today. Text us, call us, let us know where you are. We've been trying to reach you guys, but your phones is off. It's disconnected again. Let's pray. Father God, touch your people. Ooh, bashando. Heal, Father God, in the name of Yeshua. All across the land. Lord, we pray for those people in elected positions, the president, his family, these elected officials. Lord, let truth prevail. This alternate facts that people use, which is no more than a flat lie, condemn that. Condemn it, expose it, let truth always prevail. We pray it to be so in Yeshua's name. Amen and thank God. My brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us today. Shalom.